Biscuit 6 3. Rich, no. Ginger, Ginger nut. nut. You rock. Oh, he's wrong. <laughs> um, hello, and <laughs> welcome to Rose CC. Today, as the nights are drawing in, we're looking at some nifty ways to make those cold winter miles more bearable for both you and your wallet. And we've got a whole table yeah. of tips and tricks to share with you. So, winter cycling kit can cost an absolute fortune, um, but we think that these hacks can save you money whilst keeping you comfortable when tackling the rain and cold and helping to keep your bike also in tip-top condition. Yeah. Now, if you've got any top tips that we miss, then drop them in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more from us. Finally, I can go back to doing the crossword because we're talking about... Newspaper down the jersey. Newspaper down the jersey. Yeah. Fantastic. Halt four. Uh, we're kicking off with a blast from the past. Uh, back in the good old days of bicycle racing, it was commonplace to see riders stuffing a few pages of the local newspaper down the front of their jerseys as an effective way to stop the chill of wind on a long mountain descent. It's certainly a cheap solution and it works surprisingly well too. Yeah, I mean, I think this is one that might be reserved for the mountains and not all of us are lucky enough to have a swan year yeah. handing us a paper at the top of every climb. but. The more sensible option is obviously to carry a lightweight, windproof gilet or a jacket. They can be relatively inexpensive. Some of them are available for, you know, 20 mm. quid or so. But I guess if you do get caught short in changeable weather, especially if you're in hilly terrain, then by all means grab the paper. I nicked a laminated menu once to get <laughs> going down from San Marino in the freezing rain. Uh, well, I've done that at the top of Alpe d'Huez as well. Obviously taking that uh, gilet or the jacket up Far too much weight. Yes, Come too on. much weight. Um, a notice board at the top near the Tour de France finish. Uh, poster for the carnival. You know, had the had the giraffes and the, and the monkeys. <laughs> Very nice, lovely yeah, wall. Now, if like me, you struggle with cold feet for what seems like, I don't know, eight months of the year, then keeping them dry is an absolute must. Um, unless you're a fair weather cyclist, then this can be a lot easier said than done and not helped by the fact that overshoes cost, well, sometimes a silly amount. Yep. Um, some cheap plastic bags to wrap around your feet. Yes. Can be a very effective way of keeping your feet not only dry, but warm as well. Now, after a bit of practice, you can get them pretty much unnoticeable, I'd mm. say. So you should manage to avoid strange looks. They can lead to sweaty feet though because plastic isn't exactly a breathable material and doesn't allow that excess heat and moisture to escape. Now, my top tip would be to go for something like this. The basic small sandwich bags, they're pretty robust too, so you can like reuse them. Yeah, I'm never going anywhere near, near your kitchen drawer ever again. Just stick them in your shoes. Or if you haven't got any sandwich bags, you can use uh, the backup, yeah, which is your cling, cling film. film. Cling film will be back later. Yeah, we're making many appearances today. Now, applying the same thought process to your hands, surgical gloves will have a similar effect. They're once again relatively cheap, they're windproof, they're waterproof, and because they're very thin, they can be worn underneath most cycling gloves to provide a bit more protection. A bit more clammy protection yeah, sometimes. Very I clammy. find this works really well when you want to wear a thinner pair of winter gloves for better dexterity. So sometimes you just need a better feel of the controls, but you don't want your hands to freeze in the wind. And these are great, these are the vinyl ones. I tend to use the nitrile ones, which are a little bit more expensive. Posh. But, yeah. Very posh. Right, enough of that. Yeah. Now, you could spend £200 on the latest, trendiest cycling glasses, or instead you can go <laughs> to the builder's merchants, <laughs> Liam's all over these, and pick up a pair of safety glasses like these with clear lenses. Uh, these ones were only £1.99. Um, they'll keep road spray and salt out of your eyes, just the same as fancy glasses, and they leave you with a fair wad of cash to spend at the cafe. Which is important. Yeah. So, they're not the most stylish of items, but no. do they prevent things from going in your eyes? Yes, they do, absolutely, yeah. and that's the main thing. Oh. You can make a primitive mudguard out of an old water bottle if you haven't got the money for proper mudguards. Um, I actually saw this one done first by Alberto Contador. Uh, granted, it's not going to be able to provide a huge amount of protection, 
but it stops water flicking up onto your shorts and keeps your pad dry for a bit longer. Yeah. Anyway, if it's good enough for Alberto, it's good enough for us. I I've think. always wanted to be on Blue Peter, so I'm gonna have a go at oh, this straight away. Lord. I mean, these days you can get an arse saver for not very much money, but if you've got a manky old bottle, or indeed a brand new bottle, <laughs> that you can repurpose then, I, I more the better. I should say something, Dave, about getting a responsible adult to help you yeah, with the scissors. Yeah, probably, yes. Or, and get some blue tape behind if you're punching any holes. Yeah. Um, this isn't exactly Tracy Island, though, is it? Not really, but, you know, I think we're there, aren't we? Broccoli. Stick that in there. And mm. job's a good one. Right, next up. <laughs> that, that's already <laughs> fallen out. We've got Vaseline. It's got many uses, but did you know it can also be an extra barrier to the elements? Uh, some cyclists have been known to slather it on their legs and bum to prevent water spray from making them feel damp and cold. You can also use it as a wind barrier on exposed skin on your face. Uh, some cyclists even use it for chamois cream. Yeah, I'm not sure about that on the chamois cream. But mm -hmm. I mean, I also know people who use it on their calves to help seal waterproof socks and overshoes. It works very well for that. Uh, so just be aware, this stuff is a bit of a nightmare to get off with a baby wipe in the car if you're using it on a rainy race or a sportive. I've made that mistake a few mm. times. Embrocation creams and oils used to be an old pro favourite before technical clothing hit the scene and they still have their place to get those muscles going mm. on a really cold day. So many bike brands offer tubs of expensive embrocation, but a tube of deep heat will do the job just as well. It's available from your local chemist. Smell. Oh, and it brings back the memories of school changing rooms. The smell of Sunday league football for me, that yeah. is. Oh, oh, yeah. God. Just remember to wash your hands thoroughly before you uh, stick your chamois cream down shorts because you do not want to mix those two jobs up. Yeah. I or, speak from bitter experience. Yeah, or wiping your eyes. <laughs> yeah. If you suffer from poor circulation, heat pads for your feet and or hands can be a good way to stave off the winter chill on a longer ride. They're reasonably cheap and the small pads can be placed in your gloves and inside your shoe or overshoe to steadily release heat over the course of a few hours. Yeah, um, that's definitely something that I've done in, in deep winter rides and sometimes even the best gloves and overshoes need a, mm. a helping hand. Your riding buddies will definitely be envious if you rock up and your feet and hands are still working yeah. after three hours in the freezing cold. You can get heated gloves, you can get heated insoles for your shoes, although obviously those are a lot more expensive. Or you can wrap your feet in tin our old favourite tin foil, which is loads cheaper. Make sure you get the yeah. thick stuff though, because this cheap stuff tends to break up a bit. Although you could always wrap it in some extra cling film. Cling film. But really, some savings aren't worth making. Get the better yeah. stuff. Yeah. Um, addressing your feet is no bad thing, but we'd also suggest starting with extra insulation for your core, as this will give your hands and feet the best chance of keeping themselves warm. Now, country lanes are typically covered in mud, washed out from the ditches or dragged along by tractors, so you'll inevitably get plastered with mud unless you've got some really good full-length mud guards. And some of that won't be mud either. No, um, there's not much worse than grabbing your water bottle and the nozzle being covered in, well, whatever was on the road um, and coming out of that hedge. Um, some water bottle brands sell bottles with integrated mud caps, or if you're feeling creative, then you can make your own. I am feeling creative, Liam. Would you like to make your own? So I've seen people, so some people use the lid off a bottle of pop uh, as a makeshift cover, put a bit of inner tube in there, yeah. and you can just stick it on the top of your nozzle like that. It will stay in place. You could even have a little bit of string as well if you want, and the best part of that is it's almost free. Or if you haven't got a water bottle top, you could always use some cling film yeah. there. <laughs> I've, I've got a friend that used to do that. Um, you also get to enjoy a zesty drink. Yes, other mm. pops are available. Right, all that road crud is also going to find its way onto your bike. Uh, one of my least favourite things about winter riding is the inevitable need for bike washing after nearly every ride. Although having a titanium bike helps, not necessarily a very cost effective solution. No. Um, one easy trick to save some time is to cover the frame with a silicone spray. Many bike brands sell it, but again, uh, you can just pop down to your local hardware store or garage and pick up a can for a few quid. We found cans for as little as like 279, which is a bargain. Yeah. 
And if that's too expensive, uh, you could always raid the kitchen cupboards and get the furniture polished and use that instead, because that works too. Just be careful not to get it on any braking surfaces. And maybe ask your mum first. We all know that it's important to keep bikes clean, especially in the winter, road grime and salt can corrode components and cables and just cause all sorts of premature wear. You might think that you need to use a dedicated bike cleaning product when washing your bike, but inexpensive washing up liquid, it will do the job just fine. Yeah, I mean, some people will tell you that the salt content can damage your bike, but your bike's covered in salt anyway in the winter, and you'll be washing it off, so it won't have a chance to do any harm. Yeah, exactly. Uh, for degreasing the chain and drivetrain, it's a similar story. Instead of very expensive cycling-specific products, a regular degreaser from the hardware store or, you know, your local garage will just be as effective. So some cyclists swear by using paraffin as well or even white spirits mm -hmm. um, to clean chains and they cost peanuts. Um, the only warning would be to keep it away from your paint because it likes eating that. Yeah, well, my favorite is this stuff. It's, a, it's an oil and grease remover. Mm. Um, sometimes it's sold as driveway cleaner. Yeah. And it's aggressive enough to give your chain you know, a proper scrub, but then you can water it down as well and use it as a general bike spray. This one's been going for years, it cost me less than a tenner. So there we are, those are our 11 hacks to keep your legs turning and your wallet a little heavier. Now, if you found this useful, then be sure to give the video a like, and for more content like this, subscribe to the channel, and be sure to share your winter hacks with us below. Thanks for watching. I'm going back to reading the crossword. Small vegetable. <laughs>